The word foreknow is probably one of the most contentious Bible terms in the whole of Scripture. For example, in Romans 8.29, the natural way to describe the word's meaning is to examine it in a descriptive way, such as is common to do with about any word. It's one of the reasons dictionaries are quite handy. Those who hold to the Calvinist philosophy, however, are quick to point out that the word is indeed a verb. But, does that even change the meaning and intent of the term on any fundamental level? Let's take a look at a couple of very simple sentences to find out. I have knowledge of that. I know that. By looking at these two sentences, you see that I am using the noun knowledge in one and the verb know in the other, and I am expressing the same meaning and intent in both. We could easily see the same thing with Romans 8.29, for whom he did foreknow, for whom he did have foreknowledge. Now, we can see that the form of the word does not change the meaning or intent by necessity. Next, let's take a look at the word foreknow all by itself. After all, in order to use a word in any sentence, you must know what the word means. Historically, fore had various meanings. For instance, when the King James Version was translated, its primary definition was properly. But to know for certain why this word is there, we should look at what it was translated from. The Greek word used there is prognosko, where we get the word prognosis, which means, in a word, forecast in English. But as used in translation from the Greek meaning, the definition would be know beforehand. So, to foreknow in Romans 8.29 is simply to know beforehand, or know before now. As expected in Scripture, the simplest definition is the meaning and intent. So, God knew Christians before now. We also know that he knew all Christians in eternity past. So, the timing of four is nothing more than a point of reference to show that God is all-knowing. Then we must ask, what does God mean by knowing us? The Calvinists will point to Genesis and say, And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived. And they will equate that kind of knowing to the foreknow in Romans 8.29 and give it the attribute of a deep, personal, intimate relationship. But, before you existed, was there a deep, personal, intimate relationship between God and yourself? Or how about just before you became a Christian? Weren't you a child of wrath? Of course you were, according to God. So that idea is an impossibility. Scripture clearly does not support it. And honestly, when it says Adam knew his wife and she conceived, the only thing that's being said there is that they had sexual intercourse and she got pregnant, and I don't think it's wise to use that to reference our relationships with God, and also to make Scripture say something it doesn't. Remember, kids, eisegesis, or reading into the text, causes brain atrophy. It's exegesis, or letting the Bible speak for itself, that has the vitamin C. So now that we've established the meaning and intent principle, and have done away with philosophy and presuppositions, what does no mean according to the Bible? In Matthew chapter 7, we find Jesus speaking about a group of people that are going to hell. He finalizes it in verse 23 by saying, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. What was the group's defense before the sentence was carried out? They cast out devils. They prophesied. They did many wonderful works. They sure sound kind of like believers, right? They did address him as Lord, Lord, after all. But take a close look at them. Their defense had no mention of getting to know him on a personal level through prayer or the word, no desire about seeking him, no study to grow closer to him, no mention of any transformation or hatred of their sin, no mention of his sacrifice for them or their appreciation and amazement of it, no mention of preaching the gospel. They were all about the show, total selfish entitlement, how could God know them? They had no interest in knowing Him. I'd also like to note that there's no mention of it not being their fault because they were not predestined to believe. I know I'd sure give that defense a try if I was in their shoes and if being predestined to believe was real. So what do we see here? God does not know them because they didn't try to know Him. 
he attempted to introduce himself just as he has with everyone and know them, but they wanted none of it. They were just name droppers so they could show off and say, look what I can do. With all of this information taken in as a whole, the only logical and scripturally consistent way to describe for whom he did foreknow is to say, God knew before now who would reach out to him. Nothing more than that. There's not even an inkling of implication of a personal relationship with him from eternity, because before being in Christ, everyone, by nature, is a child of wrath.